Hey, welcome back to The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. The Christian Association of Nigeria, CAN, has sued the federal government over the implementation of the Companies and Allied Matters Act, CAMA. On August 7th last year, the president signed the bill and uh, the Christian Association are not happy about this. It's generated a lot of controversy and uh, opposition, especially by the Christian body in Nigeria. And to discuss this, we've invited the president of Cannes and the Nigerian Baptist Convention, the vice president of Baptist World Alliance, Reverend Dr. Samson Olashipo. Good morning and thanks for joining us. Good morning, thank you. How are you doing? I'm great, thanks for being here. So section 839, one and two of the Kama Act, uh, basically empowers the government and the CAC to take over the uh, function, the running of the church and to uh, basically suspend the trustees of the church. But statesmen from Can we've seen has described this as a satanic section of the act of an ungodly law. How is this so? Thank you, moderator. The violations of fundamental human rights in Kama is more than section 839. It begins with section 17, in particular, section 17.2a downwards. Okay. It, the section 217.2a says that the association or any individual any group that wants to take the corporate affairs commission to to court over come or any issue must give 30 days pre-action notice to corporate affairs commission an individual cannot go to court directly we must first of all go to the person that they want to go to take to court to state the cause of action particulars of the claim, name and place of abode of the intending plaintiff, and release sought. All those provisions are against the Constitution of Nigeria. Under the Constitution of Nigeria, we, I can sue, any association can sue, and be sued. So if a corporate affairs commission, which is operating under the Constitution of Nigeria, is creating another process of taking people to court, then they have violated the constitution of Nigeria. That is section 72, A, B, C, et cetera, et cetera. If you go and read it, up to D, the relief sort must even be stated. I want to take you to court. You say I cannot take you to court unless I have contacted you first. Where is such a law made okay. in the entire world? Reverend Olashipo. It is, it is Reverend Olashipo, yes, I, I want you to clarify why CAN, as a religious body in Nigeria, is so opposed to the bill, saying it's a declaration of war. We also saw one of the of, you know, popular pastors in Nigeria, uh, we're talking about the presiding bishop of the Living Faith Church Worldwide, David Oedipo, saying, in quote, this can never work. Why the opposition yeah, to this if, bill? Yeah, yeah, if you go to section 8391, they say the commission may order, may by order suspend the trustees of an association and appoint an interim manager or managers to manage, manage the affairs of an association where it is reasonably be um, it, it reasonably believes that there is this, there is that, there is that. The the reason is satanic is that number one, the the church is classified together with secular associations operating under the same law. Each association has its nature and its mission. The church is essentially secret. It is not like any other business enterprise. And the, of course, the church is not for business. The, the, the church is for the salvation of the souls of men and women. So the, in that law, there must be a, a separation of the church because of its nature and its mission from any other company, like uh, Julius Baga, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. I, I'm sorry to mention it, 
So the, you cannot just say that the, the, the law you are using, the rule you are using for an association which is a company, a commercial entity, is the same thing you are going to use for the church. It's lack of respect for the nature and the mission of the church in Nigeria. If it is operated elsewhere, where they don't take the sacred aspect of life as important, it cannot operate here in Nigeria. We are our faith in the Lord and the God we serve is so important to us. The church is not a commercial entity. The church is a sacred body. All right. So help, help us understand better, you know, why, you know, the church, you know, finds this satanic. Um, does it in any way take power from religious leaders? Does it take power from the Christian Association of Nigeria uh, to control the religious bodies in the country? And it has deprived the church. Uh, the first thing I told you is that the church should be respected for its sacredness. When you take that sacred aspect from the church and classify it as secular, then you, it is satanic. Okay. All right. Satan does not recognize who God is and the, 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 the unique position of God. The church should be respected for what it is. You okay. cannot classify the church as a commercial organization. Well, it, it, we, which, which, pro, which, which good are we producing? Reverend so there must be respect for the nature and the mission of the church in Nigeria. Reverend Ayokunle, I want to Otherwise, draw your attention to something. Um, so Reverend Ayokunle, can you hear me, sir? Are you there? I'm listening. Okay. In the US, in Canada, I'm in Britain, they have laws that are similar to Kama. And I remember that in 2019, the United Kingdom uh, Charities Commission uh, you know, had conducted a five-year investigation into the United Kingdom branch of Christ Embassy. And they found that about 827 million naira had been paid by the church to illegal entities or had been illegally paid to entities and individuals. That was a fraud that they convicted the church of. And that's what Kama Bill is, you know, touted to prevent, to prevent fraud in the church, because they found that in the past, churches, charities have been used to launder, for, launder funds. But if the church is supposed to be open, transparent, and accountable, why the objection to Kama? I have told you, I think you are just saying what you want to say. You didn't listen to my explanation. The church is sacred. We are not saying that the church should not be monitored but the church should be monitored as a sacred organization, not as a secular organization. When you apply, uh, you use uh, the, the, the medicine that is supposed to, 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 to be used to kick cancer, you are using it for another disease, then you, it's a misnomer. All right, so, it's so, a wrong so, step entirely. Reverend we I are not me. saying that the church should have anything, but the church should not be treated as a commercial entity, for God's sake, by right. its nature, by its mission, it is sacred. All right. So, Reverend Ayokule, are you saying that it would be better for the government to create a bill just for the church that does not, you know, put the church and charities in the same, you know, bill? Is that what you? Is that what the church would prefer? That, that is exactly what we are saying. But our our groups with this law is more than just this aspect you are just emphasizing. I said that we have got problems with so many as aspects of karma because it, the, the many aspects violate the constitution of Nigeria, especially for the commission to, to tamper with the trusteeship of, of the church without the court action. Courts must be the one that we approach, not that the co commission will just, by its whims and prices, continue to take action, and then the, the court is excluded. Okay. Why is the court there for Nigerians? No organization should be bigger than the court. Uh, the Corporate Affairs Commission is not bigger than the court in Nigeria. Every action that will lead to conspiration or any action against any other organization must be given, the order must be given not by the commission, but by the court. Okay. All right. Let me. Let's also now talk about the, you know, the uh, 
legal aspect of it. The Christian Association of Nigeria uh, apparently has sued the federal government. Um, how do you expect that this will play out? And uh, do you think that the that, that Khan has a strong case to be presented in court um, against Kama and the federal government? We are by the grace of God, we have done our research. Uh, Kama is about eight hundred pages uh, uh, law, and uh, many people Nigerians are very lazy. They wouldn't read it uh, line by line, word, word for word. The, the cry that we are making is not for the, the church alone. It's for you also speaking. Your organization is treated as an association. And in dealing with you, any regulatory body that is going to regulate you must do it in consonance with the constitution of Nigeria. When that body is now violating the constitution of Nigeria, somebody must call them to order. We are all other organizations because of laziness of Nigeria. They didn't read that law line for line, word for word. All the, exclus the, 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 the ex exclusiveness of the, of the constitution in the actions of Kama I mean, by, by, by the Corporate Affairs Commission are, are null and void. They cannot stand because they, they, they have violated the grand norm. And the grand norm now is the constitution of Nigeria. So no law can be promulgated by the National Assembly or any other person that is a violation of the constitution of Nigeria. Why, why do you Unless think, that concern is... Reverend Ayokunle, why do you think the president went ahead to sign this into law, uh, regardless of these perspectives that you, you know, Khan has continuously mentioned? Well, I'm not in government, and I'm not the, the president. I think the, the best thing is to ask him the question, why he has gone ahead to sign such a law with, who, uh, whose uh, many, many parts violate the concern of Nigeria. All right. You know, we, of course, we'll continue to follow up and see where this uh, uh, case goes, as uh, Khan, of course, has uh, gone to court. Uh, Aneta would also throw in something okay. before we go. Um, Reverend Ayakunle, I just wanted to throw this out there, right? Proponents of the bill. They point to the Bible and they quote the book of Romans, chapter 13, verse 1 to 6. And uh, permit me to read this. Um, th that part of the Bible says uh, that everyone must submit himself to governing authorities. And the verse reads, quote, For there is no authority except that which God has established. Consequently, he who rebels against authority is rebelling against God and rebelling against what God has instituted. And those who do so will bring judgments on themselves. So how do you interpret this uh, verse of the Bible, Romans 13, 1 to 6, in light of the camomile? I am I'm afraid you have quoted that passage out of context. It has no relevance to what we are saying. We are not saying that we are not ready to obey the law. But the maker of the law also must not violate the law. If you have violated the law, you have got no right to compel anybody to obey you. The, every law that we make in the land will respect the grand norm, which is the constitution of Nigeria. This is a, a day of enlightenment. It's not a day of ignorance. I know my right. Why do you want to deprive me of my right when the concern does not deprive me of that right? That's what we are saying. And we are fighting for you, not for ourselves alone, for everybody. We are people that should talk. The people that know the law, if they have time to sit with this thing, they have, they, they have been dehumanized by many professors and sections of this camera. Right. We are ready to obey if it is in consonance with the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria of okay. 1999 as amended. But when it is violating it, then it is, they, have, they have already made it a law that cannot be respected. All right. Mm. Reverend Ayakuli, okay. thank you so much for uh, speaking with us this morning. And, um, yes, you know, with you. all the details, and as the marriage, we'll definitely be bringing <laughs> you, you in again much. to clarify uh, thank some you of very all much. the details. Thank you. Have a great day. All God right. Uh, good morning to you. We still have a lot uh, to talk about this morning. The East, uh, uh, Eastern Corridor and, of course, uh, rail lines that we're coming up next with here on The Breakfast. Don't go anywhere. Good morning once again.